Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be another declutter video. It's a little bit different than my declutter videos where I go through an entire drawer and one category of makeup because I usually only do that maybe once a year, but a few times a year I like to go through my entire collection and just quickly look through the drawers and remove any products that I'm no longer using. Sometimes my makeup preferences change, sometimes I just find something that's a little bit better. So I like to be able to do this to not only keep my collection in check, but if I can catch products pretty early on I'm able to pass them along to friends or family so that way they're not just sitting in my drawer going to waste I also switch up my everyday makeup drawer every few months and that gives me the chance to try everything in my collection and if I'm not using anything by the time I do my next everyday makeup drawer I decide to declutter products as well so I just thought I would film today's video and show you some of the products that are leaving my collection so first of all I did place an order on Milani's website maybe a month or two ago and I did purchase a foundation but I chose chose the wrong shade. It's so hard to choose the right shade online, but obviously, I mean, a lot of us aren't really going to the store these days. I'm not even sure if they sell this at the actual drugstore. I'm sure they do, but this is the Milani Screen Queen Natural Finish Foundation. I got the shade 170 Golden Fair, which actually looks like it would match me pretty well. And Milani has this Thing on their website where you can like type in an existing foundation shade that you wear in another line and it will match you. I can't remember exactly what shade I typed in but this looks like it would be a pretty good match but when I actually apply this product it is so light. It is so much lighter on the skin than it is in the bottle and I can't even begin to make it work for me. So I need to purchase a different shade. I kind of swatched it on my face and it felt really nice. So I'm still curious to try out the foundation. I just need to purchase it in a shade that will work for me. So I'm just going to pass this product along. So I put these two primers in my everyday makeup drawer for spring so I could test them out over the past few months. And I have used both of these a few times and I think that the primers work well, but I don't like them enough to keep them in my collection. Catrice makes two of my favorite primers, the Keep Me Matte Primer and then the Hydro or no, the Aqua Fresh Hydro Primer. Both of them are so good, and these are from the same line. This one is the Poreless Blur Primer, and it's supposed to give you like a soft focus effect. I think that it does work well, so if you're looking for a smoothing or blurring primer, you might like this one, but I also think the Keep Me Matte Primer does blur my skin while also keeping my skin matte, so I just prefer that one over this, so I'm just going to pass this along as well. It's pretty much you know, unused. I've only used it a couple of times. This one is their anti-red base. Now my face tends to get very, very red. If you guys have watched any of my Get Ready With Me's, you might know that. And if I use an exfoliator in the morning or if I exercise or if the water is really hot when I'm washing my face, then my face gets bright red. So a lot of you guys recommended like a color correcting base. So I decided to try this one out, but I don't know what it is about color correcting. It's just not my favorite step. If you're someone who struggles with redness and you use a light coverage product or a tinted moisturizer, this might be a good option for you because it does kind of hide a little bit of that redness. But if I'm going to go in with a primer, I usually just want it to be more mattifying or a little bit more smoothing. And I mean, I love primer. I have so many that I use. So using this one takes away from using one of my favorite formulas. And I just feel like it's not necessary because my foundations typically even out that redness anyway. I'm also decluttering this Milani eyeliner. I did get this when I placed that Milani order on their website. So this works well. This is their tank eyeliner. It's waterproof. It's smudge proof. It stays in place. It's super intense and dramatic. I mean, it sounds like the perfect eyeliner, but I've mentioned this before. They say that it has like this tank mechanism. So it's supposed to stay really fresh and give you like an easy application every single time. It does work, but it almost works a little bit too well. I feel like this product just glides on the eyes a little bit too easily for me. And before I know it, I have the most intense dramatic wing. You know how when you're doing your eyeliner and you'll like look at it and then even it out and even it out a little bit more before you know it, the wing is your entire eyelid? That's what happens to me when I use this product. So I just need something that gives me a little bit more control and this product, I mean, while it's good and the formula is amazing, it almost comes out just a little bit too fast for me. So I'm just going to pass this product along. The formula is great, I wish I loved it. It just, it's not for me. So I have a bunch of open eyeshadow primers for some reason. I think that I got a few in subscription boxes and then I already had a few open. I was testing a couple. So I wanted to narrow it down and just keep the ones that I really love. So I decided to 
to declutter this one from Pretty Vulgar. This one works well, but it's slightly tacky. And overall, when it comes to eye primer, I just prefer a very smooth eye primer. I can deal with a little bit of a tacky one because typically I just set it into place with an eyeshadow. But because I have so many that are currently open, I'm not going to be able to use all of them up before they go bad. So I'm just going to pass this one along to somebody who enjoys a little bit more of a sticky or tacky base. So recently I filmed a video talking about 10 makeup products that I no longer buy. If you guys want to check it out, I'll link it below. One of the products or categories that I mentioned were cream products, cream cheek products. I feel like I always want to jump on the cream product trend and so many people look beautiful in cream products and rave about them and love them, but whenever I try them, they just don't work for me and the way that I wear my makeup. There are some that I enjoy, but Overall, nine times out of 10, I don't end up reaching for them. So I have resolved to quit buying cream products. And I feel like this product really helped me solidify that decision because I got it in a BoxyCharm and I was so excited to use it because I've heard amazing things about these highlighter sticks. I actually almost purchased one from Sephora's website. So this is the Hourglass Vanish Highlighter in the shade Champagne Flash. It's seriously such a beautiful highlighter. And if you like cream products, you're going to enjoy this so much, but I think because I wear so many mattifying products whenever I try to layer creams on top they almost skip across the skin they just don't sit well on my skin because of the way that I do my foundation and honestly I've come to terms with the fact that that is okay I have some powder highlighters that I love and cream highlighters will never look as good on me as they do on other people because of how I like to prep my skin and wear my foundation. So unfortunately, I'm going to be decluttering this one. It's so beautiful, I wish it worked well for me. And I was excited that I had the chance to try it out through BoxyCharm, but it just, it's not for me. And I told myself, I can't keep doing this. I cannot keep adding cream products to my collection because I don't love them. I'm also decluttering two different ColourPop Super Shock highlighters. I think the last cream highlighter in my collection is one from ColourPop. I did keep the shade Wisp because I think that's really beautiful on the cheeks and on the eyes. As far as cream highlighters go, I don't mind the ColourPop Super Shock highlighters, but as I was looking through my collection, I haven't touched these since I did my last highlighter declutter. So that kind of tells me I won't be reaching for them anytime soon and it's time to get rid of them. I am decluttering the CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow in the shade Deep. I actually like this brow gel. At first I wasn't sold on it because it is a little bit more of a wet formula. I felt like it was really intense on my brows and it locked them into place like it almost hairsprayed them into place. But this shade is just a little bit too dark for me. I also had one shade lighter. I can't remember what it was called, but it was like a warm brown and that one was a little bit too light for me. So I try to make this one work, but whenever I use it, my brows are just way too dark. So because of that, I just feel like it's time to get rid of it. There's no point in keeping something that's not the right shade. So I am decluttering a few eyeshadow palettes. The reason I am decluttering these, well, a couple of them are a little bit newer and some are a little bit older. So as for the ones that are a little bit newer, I enjoy using them and they work well, but I've noticed that I haven't reached for these over some of my go-to palettes that have similar colors. So because I just added them to my collection, maybe a few months ago, I feel like it would be better to pull them out now and pass them along to somebody else rather than having them sit in my drawer and wait until I do my next declutter in 2021. Both of these products work well, so I'm sure someone else will enjoy them, especially this one. This one is the Fenty Beauty Moroccan Spice Palette. So I did get this in a BoxyCharm. It was like a Fenty themed BoxyCharm, and I was really excited to try it out because it's not something that I wanted to purchase myself, but it was something that I was curious about. So it was kind of perfect that I did get it in a BoxyCharm because it gave me the chance to try the shadows. And I'll be honest, I mean, the shadows perform well they're not like exceptional shadows they don't blow me away I wouldn't reach for these over a couple of other formulas that are kind of my go-to but I didn't really have any issue with them I think they blend out well the metallic shadows are maybe like slightly lackluster but overall as a whole the palette is good I think for me I don't love this color story it's like half warm toned half cool toned and you know when I wear cooler tones I usually wear something similar to what I have on today and not so much like these gray tones and and then when it comes to warm tones, I mean, I have a bunch of warm palettes that I love. So I just think that this is a beautiful palette. It's a beautifully packaged palette. So I'd rather just pass it along to somebody else to enjoy rather than having it sit in my collection and go unused because I've only had it for like maybe two or three months. 
The other palette that I'm passing along is this one from Zoeva, which I did get in a BoxyCharm as well. And I'm not just decluttering like all of my BoxyCharm products. I did cut down on my BoxyCharm subscription. So I was getting BoxyCharm, BoxyCharm Premium, and Boxy Luxe. And I felt like that was a lot. So I was just getting so many products. I wasn't able to actually test out everything. So I did cut my subscription back and I just get like the regular BoxyCharm, which I do enjoy. I think it's fun. It kind of pushes me out of my comfort zone to try some new brands, some new products. So I like BoxyCharm and I, I don't just, you know, unbox it to declutter everything. But with any subscription box, I mean, you will get products that you don't end up reaching for over and over because the products are a surprise. So I am decluttering this palette that I got in my BoxyCharm as well. Again, this one performs well, but I just feel like I have palettes that are very, very similar to this one that I reach for over this one. The ColourPop Baby Got Peach palette is very similar to this, and that's like one of my go-to palettes during the summer. So I'd rather give this to someone who doesn't have anything similar to this so they can actually use it and enjoy it. I just don't need like a different formula that's very, very similar to my ColourPop palette that I love. And then I just have a couple of older palettes. I have a drawer where I have like extra brushes and in the back of that drawer, I had a couple of eyeshadow palettes. I don't know how they got back there, but it is time to declutter this one or declutter these. This one is the e.l.f. Sculpting Silk Eyeshadow Trio. Honestly, this performs well. I don't know if e.l.f. even sells these any longer, but e.l.f. has stepped it up when it comes to their eyeshadows. I love the bite size palettes. I also love their uh, Retro Paradise palette that's been one of my go-to palettes this summer but you know obviously I wasn't missing this if it was in the back of a drawer so I'm just going to declutter it and then I don't even know how I was missing these because these were some of my staple palettes but you guys these are so old at this point and I do feel like I've kind of been able to replace them with ColourPop palettes so NYX used to have I loved these so much these are the ultimate multi-finish shadow palettes and I have three of them this one was my favorite this one is smokescreen when I first started getting into colorful eyeshadow I used this one over and over because it has purples blues and greens and you could just go down the row and create a simple look and I think that these palettes were kind of genius at the time I know Tati came out with her textured neutrals palette and it's kind of based on the same theme like the same color down the row in different textures and finishes and these were around you know before that and I loved the fact that they were kind of designed like that because they just make eyeshadow a little bit more approachable which I think is why her palette is so popular and a lot of people enjoy it but I have had these for I don't even know how long. I wanna say four years, maybe longer. I mean, I don't usually go by the typical expiration guidelines. I usually go by like scent or texture or formula. You just kind of know when a product is no longer good and it's important not to use expired makeup, don't get me wrong. So I always make sure to get rid of expired products. Sometimes with powder products, it's a little bit more difficult to tell because powder formulas can last a really long time. But other than the fact that these are old, I haven't reached for these in a while. Again, they were in like some random drawer and I do feel like I have ColourPop palettes that have all of these shades at this point. So I think it's just time to part with them. I really loved them. They served me very well. They helped me create some really fun looks, but at this point, I just don't need them. The last thing that I am decluttering are these ColourPop Supernova shadows. I actually have a lot of liquid and glitter shadows in my collection, and these are probably the ones that I reach for the least. I definitely think a few of these are expired because I've had them for a long time. I don't think ColourPop even makes this formula anymore, but but I do feel like there are other brands that do liquid and glitter shadows a little bit better. I really like Stila. Obviously, they're kind of known for theirs. I also really like the new e.l.f. liquid shadows. So I just don't wear liquid shadow enough to justify having a huge collection of them. And these are pretty old. They're the ones that I reach for the least. So I think it's fine. I think it's time to finally let them go. Okay guys, that is the end of my declutter video. Thank you so much for watching. I have a ton of declutter videos on my channel if you like watching them. I have some in this style. I have some where I open up a drawer and go through them. So I'll link all of my declutter videos for 2020 in the playlist and the playlist in the description box below. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.